All right, guys. Well, uh, good morning. Welcome to Wednesday Open Forum. Um, we have uh, a bunch of you guys uh, looking great this morning. I appreciate you having your cameras on and being ready to go. Um, special guests again today, guys, for part two of the lecture series, uh, Jason Pugh and Michelle Renner from AmeriFirst and AmeriUno. So welcome to you guys. Thanks for coming in. Um, I will, uh, Jason, I will turn over the floor to you to be the host for this meeting. And again, I'm going to need it back. Uh, guys, this one's only about 30 minutes long. Last week was 56 minutes, I think. Um, this one is only 30 minutes. Um, last week, we got a, I think we got a fantastic presentation on tips and tricks for, um, for your social media. Um, we're going to get further into all this stuff as we go along. Uh, but week two is here, session number two. I'll let Jason and uh, Michelle introduce uh, the session hosted by Michael Meyer. So Jason, uh, Michelle, looks like Michelle's ready to go. She's unmuted. Uh, you guys, let us know what's going on. I'll give it to Jason. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so um, like last week, this is not live. So as you're watching this, just know this is pre-recorded. Uh, and it's basically a... a we have weekly uh, different things that we do with with people like Michael Mayer, the guy last week, uh, Tom Ferry, and like a Momentum Monday. So this is uh, many in the the realtor world are familiar with Michael. Um, and just a different perspective of kind of a lot of the stuff that touched on last week, but just getting out there in a in a new environment, networking, connecting, um, and a you know after COVID and and things like that. So. Uh, I'll go ahead and share this, but just keep in mind, again, it's not live. So there's some things that it's obviously going to apply to more to, you know, at the beginning, just introductions with our team and, and realtors that we had brought on for our Momentum Monday um, at the time. So Ryan, do you, did you already transfer over to me? I sure did, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see here. Guys, just so you so you guys know, after this, we're going to have uh, um, questions and answers. We had some of you guys uh, email in some questions and stuff that you wanted to go over during our open forum. So um, when we say goodbye to Jason and Michelle, we'll get started on that. All right. Happy Monday, AmeriFirst. Good morning to Ameritrust on the West Coast. And buenos dias, Ameduno. Uh, we are here for Momentum Monday, and as promised, we've got Michael Mayer in the house, but uh, he is wrapping up a, uh, another function, and he will be here in just a couple of minutes. So Friday, we had a great hour of power, guys, and uh, we were going to talk about giving away some AmeriCash. We challenged some people with uh, what to bring, and, uh, and they did. They brought it, and we've got some. I want to share, share my screen here. Here is an example for those that haven't seen what's comes, what comes out of Surefire. This home actually went pending right as uh, we were putting this together out of the Cincinnati market. But uh, really good stuff. It pulls all, that, uh, pulls all the pictures right off of the MLS, pumps them right in there. 5,900 square feet. Holy cow. For 549000 bucks. That's a, that's a lot of house built in 1902. It's not happening in California. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess not. Uh, anyway, got your location, area details, uh, your agent information is there. So you got all the, all the contact information for your uh, for the realtor. Schedule a showing with a click of a button, uh, and uh, then you've got uh, your mortgage pro Steve Lichtenfeld. He's going to be some winner of some AmeriCash rolling in. But uh, and then uh, are you qualified for financing? Schedule a call. So good stuff there. I'm uh, going to show something else here. I think we've got an Instagram post. And uh, let's see here. David Pauly down in uh, Louisville, Lexington, uh, Kentucky market. Uh, is showing an open house from a, uh, on a Instagram, I think it is. Uh, I'm sure, Doug, you could confirm that. I'm not a big Instagram guy, but. Uh, <laughs> anyway. hey, I think that's in my face uh, space. That's on face space. With face space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And then, uh, and then we've got, uh, let's see here, we've also got stuff from MBS Highway. And I'm going to show that real quickly because it looks like Michael Mayer's in the house. So I want to make sure we get him, uh, get him up and running. But here's, uh, here's an outline and an open house flyer right out of MBS Highway. And, uh, you know, get you all of the commute information, the uh, people, 
the demographics, cost of living, all of that kind of stuff. So with that said, let's get started. We can see Michael Mayer in the house. Michael, welcome. And uh, we're using Zoom. We're going to shut this down and uh, Jessica will do that in case we get Zoom bombed. But other than that, throw your Q&A in the bottom of the screen of the Zoom platform. For Michael Mayer, a great friend of ours, great partner. We talked to you last back in, uh, I think it was June of 2020, right? It's uh, about the first three, two or three months of the pandemic was hitting in. And and uh, how you been since June, Michael? Working on adapting and adopting, that's for sure. I'll tell you, it, it wasn't it? I mean, it's like best year ever, right? 2020 was the best year ever. It was one of those where, uh, now I do know that uh, people had COVID issues and it was real and people uh, passed away from it. I understand that. On the flip side, I also understand that having to uh, ad adapt was a great thing for a lot of people. And uh, those that didn't adapt uh, are struggling. And those that adapted had their best year ever. You know, we had our Smart Restart Summit in August of last year. And every single panelist that we had on, we had 27 panelists. I'm sorry, we had 33 panelists on the day of the event. Every single one of them had been having their best year ever in the business by that August. And that was with Michigan Minnesota, New Jersey, some of these states that were completely shut down. So um, it's one of those where uh, I, I'll tell you, I, as I mean, 2020 was a, a weird year for sure. Uh, but I am so excited about 2021. It's not even funny because uh, we've learned to marry the online world with the offline world in our business. And uh, it's freed me up to do a lot of other things. There we go. Ron, you're muted. Ron, you're muted. So much wisdom right there. That we missed. I lost my best friend. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to do 15 seconds. So anybody that didn't listen to Friday needs to go back and listen to it, right? Because it was all about re-engaging, open houses, start talking to people. And I got off the Friday call, which again, it was a great one. Um, and I said to myself, you know what, this is, this is re-engagement of, of a Michael Mayer topic conversation. So, so I got on the phone and, and uh, I got lucky. I said, hey, Mike, you got, you got a couple minutes to talk and, and, and gracious enough. And so some of the topics, right, and I'll say them and then I'm going to let him roll because that's what he does. So here's what I wrote down. And, and Michael, just write them down and then you can rock and roll. The first one I wrote down what was, which you started was getting back to business and relationships, which you're just starting to roll on. Second one was re-engaging and re-energizing your business, which is all around like exactly what you're talking about. And then, then business plans that include face-to-face. -face. And you and I talked about the magic of, of where the world's opening up. Mm -hmm. Then we talked about, you know, overcoming the negative. Mm -hmm. the inventory, can't get my offer accepted why waste my time working with buyers and so one two three and four and then five right is michael mayer exciting 2021 what's happening and what's new and with that michael mayer so so start start with the number one and start rock and rolling bud well you know i think the one thing that we found about relationships and referrals was that the best time to build a relationship was 10 years ago you know and the second best time is today. You know, a lot of people took advantage of the COVID and the quarantine times to call their database, not a lot of people, but the people within GenGen. Uh, we, we have something called the catastrophe call. And the catastrophe call is there's a huge storm that goes through your town. There's a, there's a hurricane, there's a tornado, there's a windstorm, there's a hailstorm, there's a whatever it may be. And you call your database, especially your top people, and and you ask them, are they okay? You know, you're just like, hey, listen, did the hailstorm affect you? And they're like, yes or no, right? And if they say no, you're like, oh, good, I was just checking. And if they say uh, yes, in fact, the hailstorm, I think it did some damage to our ro roof, then we would say, listen, we have three great roofers in our referral network, 
would you want me to connect you to one of the three roofers so you can trust the people who are doing the roof? Because, you know, in the roofing business, there is, you know, there, there's, there's some scam. There's some, some bad news, right? So these are three roofing companies that we trust. Would you want us to connect you? And they're like, oh my gosh, really? Yeah. And here's the thing that, that like a hailstorm actually happened. And, and, you know, it's one of those where these, these people that we called ended up were way ahead of the curve because the people didn't know who to call. They didn't know who to trust. And by the time all the consumers and all the people in our, our neighbor uh, neighborhood and city called our people had already had the estimates done and were already getting new, new roofs on their home because we were so proactive with the catastrophe call. Well, 2020 was big, one big giant catastrophe call opportunity. And our people were all over that, right? They were just calling. I mean, has COVID affected you? That was our opening line in our database. Now, can you still use that? I mean, I, I, you're, you're running out of time to use that, you know? So what do we need to do? We need to dust off the event playbook, right? We need to dust off the one-to-one -one playbook. We need to dust off the networking playbook. We need to dust off the open house playbook because it, we are re-emerging. We are, and, and I'm telling you right now, the first one who moves and, and seeks engagement is the winner. I mean, if, if here, uh, I'll give it a throw it out is for all the agents on here is, is, you know, here's the thing, which is better. You decide to hold an event for your neighborhood in the clubhouse right? You do a picnic, you do a barbecue. It's summer, you do a barbecue, you have a lot of fun, you sponsor it, you have some other sponsors with you, you have a charity involved, you have a great event, a lot of people show up. Okay, so which is better, you doing that event or your biggest competitor doing that event two weeks before you do your event, right? So here's the thing, do your event first get dust off the playbook get it going make it happen whoever does it first is the one who wins and the one who does it second is just copying the first person so i'm just saying is it's it's, it's time to uh take out that that system of engagement and make sure it happens the open houses michael what, what yeah. about the fearful thing you know what it makes yeah. sense to me but i haven't talked to somebody in a long long time Time. I'm a little nervous, the re-engagement, because I just really haven't talked to somebody in a long time. Should Nobody's talked to that? a lot of people a lot of times. So I think you have the COVID excuse. You know, you're just like, man, I was so wrapped up in COVID and quarantine and my family and everything about that, that I didn't give you a call. And it's just like, how did that affect you? Did the COVID affect you? Did quarantine affect you? Was it affected? You know, did it affect you or your family? I hope not. And by the way, when you say, I hope not, 99.2% of the time, they had no effects, right? But if they do, the 0.8%, you're like, oh my gosh. And you know what I've discovered is people are like, you know what? We, we dealt with it. It wasn't the greatest thing ever, but you know, we're, we feel like we're kind of on the sunny side of this, you know, we're on the positive side of it. So, um, you know, so that, I think that's the biggest thing right now is, is just getting out there and, and re-engaging and, um, I'm telling you, we just did a live event in Florida. It was magical, Ron. It was, it was magical. People are craving interaction. By the way, we had a consumer event. We had two consumer events and we had one realtor event. And it was, they didn't leave. I got done speaking and we we're like, all right, thanks everybody. We got a cocktail reception, right? So we had a cocktail reception, you know, Every single person who was there was there to the very end, even with a late break. And then cocktail reception stayed. And then like we, the cocktail, the people, the bar, the hotel bar left, took their, and they're still, people are like one to talk. Finally, we're just like, had to lock the doors. So people are really craving relationships and engage, engagement right now. So you can, you can really put yourself at the forefront with an open house or a housewarming party uh, or an event 
for your neighborhood or an event for your database. It's great. It's great. And wouldn't you say that that I think the difference between the ones that are re-engaging and, and those that aren't, maybe the gap, maybe even get getting bigger between the ones that show up in your room because they are ready to rock and roll and those that aren't, I would tell you, you tell me, isn't, isn't the gap pretty significant? Those that are going to do are going to take over the market. Those that don't, it's like the herd's thinning a little bit. Yeah, totally. A hundred percent. Those, those who are engaging are, are capturing all the business and, and those that are, are maybe still reluctant are being left behind. And it really is. And here's the thing, people, the consumer is becoming more resistant to, we, here's what we thought. We thought Zoom buyer consultations and Zoom listing appointments were the future. They're not, they're not. Now, is it great that we worked on those presentations and now we have it in PowerPoint and we can do it electronically? 100%. But I'm telling you, you're the one that does it by Zoom and your competitor does it in person, you're going to lose. You're going to lose 100% of those. I don't care how good you are, how experienced you are, how great that presentation goes. You will lose to the person who goes in person and does that one-on-one. -on -one. It's straight out of 7L. There's an energy with a live one-on-one -on -one interaction that is not there. So. So, so, so here's another question. You get a loan officer, you get an agent, right? Yeah. And, and then you get activities, right? Yeah. So how important is it for the loan officer that not only engages with, with a realtor, but actually starts to create the activities and pushes, pushes things forward in your, in your mind? Well, I mean, once again, I mean, it's the same structure for a lender is, is get out there and start building. And I'll tell you, if you're a lender, You've got a heck of an opportunity right now because your competitors are fat on refis. No offense to any lender in the room, but I'm telling you, they, they think their poop doesn't stink and they think they're this great loan officer because they've been doing these refis and they've been floated by refis. And that's, I'm not saying it's completely gone, but it's pretty much gone. And the interest rates are going to go up according to Fed and some other indicators. And here's the thing is, Purchase is the world. You guys know that. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir with AmeriFirst and Ameritrust. So it's it's one of those where purchases are the world and there's lots of purchases to be had out there. And it's one of those where I think it's, you know, it's one of those where get out there, get in person, go to their open houses, interact with the agents, go to lunch with them, you know, mix and mingle. And then don't be afraid to bring the ideas of 7L and bring the ideas of event mastery to, to those agents uh, with the thought of partnering up to do them, you know, it, it has the cost for both of you. We're all after the same client, you know, I've heard many times over the years, we're better together. And I a hundred percent believe that. And especially if we have a plan that incorporates both of our strengths and that's, so, so, you know, so, so to your point, it, Craig, can you do me a favor? Can you throw up the, the slide that I, I shipped you? Cause I actually, you know, again, it's a cornerstone piece, right? Whoa, bang. Look at you, bingo! Look, look Olmstead at that. Olmstead is so, on it, dude. I, I'm telling you, you, you you're, you're not surprised there. So anyway, so I, I just want you to just talk through what you just said, mm -hmm. and, and and kind of just put this into a kind of a visual perspective because you you go to events, seminars, open houses, the one-on-one meeting. So so just talk a little bit about which which is more of a summary at this point, but yeah. talk them through the impact, the influence, just for the folks you know. And again, most of the folks on here probably have already experience you it but go ahead and i want you to talk through some of the things that, that you're seeing that are important on, on your pyramid yeah so man we're back to this aren't we you yeah. know i mean this yeah. this is this, as important as this figure was you know in in 2010 2015 2017 it's more impactful in 2021 and and we've we've pulled this out more this year i think than we have any year in the past and it's one of those, the bottom three levels are advertising, direct mail, and electronic communication, which includes email, that kind of thing, social media. And those things are in the informational zone, but they're really expensive to stand out. You've got to do something really stupid or really ridiculously awesome in many cases to stand out. And with an email, it's almost impossible to stand out, period, unless it's an invitation to an event. Trust me, the market updates it's tough, right? The, the newsletters, people, it just seems like they have enough of reading on, on, the, on the screen that they don't need any more newsletters. 
So that leads us up to the handwritten notes, which is its own level. It, it, you want to make an impact this week, write five handwritten notes and ask them in the PS, put a PS in them and just say, shoot me a text when you get this and put your phone number in there and just have them contact you after they get a handwritten note. Um, phone calls, events and seminars, and one-on-one -on -one meetings are the top three levels. We all know that one-on-one -on -one communication is the number one way to do sales. You wanna be influential, you wanna be convincing, you wanna get a sale, you go one-on-one, -on -one. that's it, period. I mean, that's why we do listing presentations, one on to the family, and that's why we do buyer consults, one to the family. <clears throat> But those three levels of the influential zone, if you want to influence, convince, or sell, you're going to do it with one of those three things. Phone calls are highly leverageable. They were the answer in the COVID. Everybody at the Smart Restart Summit that we did, 33, everyone to a single one, is were your phone calls up or down? And they said 300% up, 500% up. I'm making more phone calls than I've ever made in my career. Oh my gosh. And you're having the best year ever. That makes a lot of sense. You know, so, so, so to your, Michael, to your point, yeah. when I was looking through this and I, and I, again, I got your stuff right next to on my desk here, but I, I saw the top, the one-on-one, -on -one, the meetings, the, 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 the get out there to go to an office, to go to a, to, to a meeting, to, to, to give a hug, whatever you need to do. But, but we're back to the one-on-one -on -one relationship is the top of the pyramid and there's no excuses anymore. So like in the old days, like I can't do it. The, the office is closed. You got to wear a mask. They won't let me in. But but as now, you know, a lot of states and more and more, you know, it, it, it's the walls are coming down, and now there are less excuses on why I can't do the one on one in red at the top of your pyramid. There aren't any excuses anymore. So to your point, get out there and be two weeks ahead. That's exactly what your point is. That exactly is is they're more likely to say yes now than at any time in your career. And that's that, I mean, what do we look for in this business? We're looking for yeses. You know, I mean, I'm looking for yeses every day, right? I, I, it's just like, man, just take a step towards me. And if you take a step towards me, then I want you to walk with me. If you'll walk with me, then let's do a lunch, right? And if you'll do lunch with me, I know we'll do business together. And that's well, that. Well, Michael, with the exception of if you get somebody that's a Debbie Downer that still is going like, I don't want to, I can't, it's not going to happen. The, you know, the sky is. Falling. They're not doing any transactions anyway. There you go. I guarantee it. There you go. If they say no, then I'm telling you, they're they're the ones that maybe have one or two this year or zero. I mean, I just saw a stat the other day. It was like 72 percent of all real estate agents had not done a, a transaction this year so far. What was the 72 percent? 72%. Now you got to realize a lot of new agents in the business, right? This year and, and in the next last year, we added like 300,000. But the other thing too, is they, they were restricted. They were holding themselves back. What this also tells you is, you know, transactions are up overall. So the top teams and the top players are capturing market share every single month. And it's like, this is your opportunity. I mean, I, I mean, every day you need to be outreach. What is your positive outreach? What is your positive outreach? And I know from a lender perspective, I know even from a realtor perspective, sometimes that just is hard, but do the hard thing now, knowing you're probably going to get a friendly greeting on the other end of the line. Whereas maybe three years ago, you didn't, you know? So, so Michael, let's, you know, we, we got another five, eight minutes left. So, so talk yeah. about Michael Mayer, you know, 2021 moving forward. You and I are working on some stuff that, yeah. you know, that we'll, we'll whittle on a little more and get back to everybody on, but talk a little bit about where, where you're going. What do you think mm -hmm. your company, uh, just to give a kind of a flavor of, of some of the things that you're, you're doing and you're involved in. Well, I'll try to make it short. We're doing a lot of things. One uh, is we're getting back into live events. Like I just said, I just went on last week, went out and did our first realtor live event. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And I'm very, very excited about that. Uh, plus I've lost a little weight. So that makes me happy. Um, the second thing is, you know, what we had to do with 2020 is we, we have this thing called the 30 day challenge. I 
founded this about 20 years ago and we were doing 30 day challenges with our team. It was just a team thing. Like one was a sign challenge. We would walk around with a sold sign, Ron. Everybody on our team, you, if, if we saw you without a sign, it was a thousand dollar fine. So you walked around with a sold sign and you would go to Starbucks, put your sold sign down, order your Starbucks. Well, what happens? People come up and they go, you know, what's going on with that? You're like, well, I just sold a house, right? Well, I just, I'm just taking this, you know, to put on a house. But here's what's funny. We had one of our team members, not even me. It was one of our team members was at a Starbucks and a news uh, person from Fox 4 in Kansas City saw him with the sign. And they decided that they would interview them on Fox 4 just because they were walking around with a sold sign, right? And it's like, well, you want to talk about the market on Fox 4? And it's like, she said, absolutely, I would. So it's, I mean, it's interesting. It caused a uh, conversation, but it also caused a, a big media opportunity as well. But that's, that's just one 30 day challenge. So two years, we started doing this kind of within November, 30 notes in 30 days. And we had a good turnout last year. Well, we did March magic, which was a 30 day challenge in March. And each and every day you get one little thing to do that will help you get referrals. So you get a video from me, you get a message from me, you get your own place in Referral Mastery Academy, your course to look at it. But it's one of those where every single day you get this one little piece. Well, not only that, but the 30 pieces all fit together to give you momentum around maximizing referrals. Well, we had hundreds of people join in in March and do this 30 day challenge and over a thousand referrals were generated from what we did in March Magic. Well, we're doing Summerfest next month. So we're doing Summerfest, which is red hot referrals. And so we're doing a 30 day challenge. You can join in very inexpensively. It's less than a hundred bucks. And you can literally every day, you're gonna get an email, you're gonna get a video, you're gonna get a, a download, and it's going to share with you what to say, what to do, and how to maximize referrals. And then, I mean, it's like, I'm doing my first ever book club. I'm actually leading a book club this month. Um, it's sold out. I would say you can join in, um, but but uh, I mean, I, I mean, here's the thing. We were gonna have 25 people on. Now we have 175 people on a Zoom, which is a little, uh, it's been interesting to handle that. Um, and then, so there's this, I mean, so we have these classes rolling out in Referral Mastery Academy every single month. In August, I am partnering with Sean Rawls, the now the best-selling author of Effortless, F-I-T-L-E-S-S. -S. Sean Rawls is famous in the real estate world. He, he grew uh, Atlanta's KW business to a huge level. So I did it. We're doing a class with him and a Canadian named Rebecca Mountain called Whispers. And this is about finding your energy. Like, where do you get energy? Where does energy get sucked out of you? And we're going to help create an awareness. What if all day you were around people, you were in places, and you are around things that fed you energy? How much different would your life be if you are around what fed you energy and you weren't around the energy vampires and the things that sucked energy right out of you? And we're going to help you identify, basically, it's like, you know, write down the things you hate, get them off your plate, right? And we're going to, we're going to, so that class is called Whispers. You got to be quiet, right? You got to be quiet to really reflect and, and learn about this energy, Um I mean, and let then me, we've got me, a bit. We, we got Michael. We got we yeah. got two minutes left. I want to. I yeah. want to. Everything you talked about. There's one word that I wrote down. I circled it. I want. I want you to to talk about this one word. And it, wow. it, everything you talked about kind of kind of circles around it. Okay, hold a second, Garb. I've got to point something out. Okay. I hope that every single person, and when I say every single person, I mean every single person, wrote down what Garb just did, right? Is, is your genuine curiosity, you wrote down a word. This is like a fun game, right? It's like wordplay. And so you're gonna give me a word and I'm gonna answer to it. This is a great thing to do with your one-on-ones when you meet with your, have a word and just say, hey, talk to this, right? That kind of thing. So go ahead. 
The, the word that, that circles everything that you're doing, it's called accountability. You mm -hmm. can you can bring or you bring the, the horses to water, but so accountability still is all this good stuff. So so talk about the word accountability and <laughs> and you know summing up everything that you're doing. I think the biggest thing with accountability is, is you know what to do and you want to do it. What's it going to take for you to do it? And if you haven't done it yet, like if you haven't done an event yet, take event mastery, have me help you do your event. Well, and, and I'm telling you, my, my classes are very inexpensive for what's out there in the world. But the thing is, is it's just like, it's, it's kind of like a way to get a taste of it without paying you know, thousands or more than that per month. And it, it's just one of those where it's like gentle, loving accountability, and you know what to do, you just need to do it. So let's get it. And, and the thing about it too, is, is I think people are just like one word, or one script, or one, like little suggestion from doing it. And that's what we do. We just give you that one little suggestion that is just enough to have you write that handwritten note, right? You're like, oh, I, I could write a handwritten note to everybody. And it's like, don't write a handwritten note to everybody. You know who you pick? You pick the high school coach or teacher who made the biggest impact on you and write that note. Or look at this, you know what? Write a handwritten note to the kid of the person who's on your team. So if you have an assistant or a buyer's agent, write a handwritten note to their son or daughter telling them how great their mom or dad is at work and this write that note. And then it's like, Oh my God, this note's fun to write. It goes, the kid opens it. It's like, mommy, did you see this? Mommy reads it, starts crying. Mommy calls you and goes, Oh my God, this was so, and it's like, you know what? You're a rock star employee. You're a rock star staff. Our team wouldn't be the same without you. And you know what? I wanted your kids to know how awesome you are. So, so, so let me let me say thank you in, in this way, right? Michael Mayer is a very busy guy. He's got a ton going. I, I gave him a call on a Friday afternoon after you know we did our our uh, you know event on Friday, and Michael Mayer picked up my call, right? You know, just just a. Just I always back. pick up your call, dude. Yeah, but but I'm but I'm I'm grateful that you do, and, and the other the other part of it. Is, is, you know what, the relationship that you have with a Doug Long and a Ron Burgum, Michael Mir does not do these, right, for, for mm -hmm. the world. You, you don't do these for the world. And so um, on behalf of myself, on behalf of Doug and Ron and, and the leadership of, of AmeriFirst, Ameritrust, Amerino, it, it's, it's really a special thing that everybody on this knows that, that when you could get somebody like a Michael Mayer to take some time out on a Monday to be able to do this, um, I'm, I'm grateful as a friend. I, I really am very grateful. So, so with that, Craig, uh, take, take us home, but, but thank you, pal. I, I appreciate what you do. Well, I'm, you. I'm a, I got a comment to that is you're exactly right. And I think it also shows the power of relationships, right? Relationships will open doors that you would, I mean, I'm telling you right now, we have 10 transactions that are coming up in the next two months and we got them because of our relationship with the listing agents. We said, listing agent, what's it going to take? And they love us because we have a great relationship with them. They told us what it would take. We made it happen. And now it's the smoothest transaction in the, in the world, right? We got that because of our relationship with other agents in our marketplace. So it's like build great relation. What else are you going to do? What else? I mean, what else do you have to do? than to build great relationships, right? I mean, unless you want a funeral with nobody there, right? Let's go, let's go, right? Let's fill that funeral home and let everybody speak to your legacy and, and write on your tombstone. And it's gonna be loving, generous and appreciative. And it's gonna be a legacy worth, you know, worth living, period. Thank you. Awesome. Great stuff, guys. Really appreciate, uh, Michael, really appreciate that. Garb, well said and, uh, and well done today. Uh, let's fill up those, uh, let's fill up those uh, hotel rooms and, let, and, and those banquet facilities like we were, had planned to before COVID hit. We had some great events. I want to bring in Doug Long just for a quick second. I, I know he's on the West Coast and, and uh, just want to see if Doug has any, uh, any thoughts. I know he's working out of a hotel. So Yeah, I'm, I'm working out of a, in San Diego right now. Absolutely. Michael, 
man, thank you so much. It was uh, generosity generation, baby. I, lo I just love everything you, you, everything you do, what you're doing. I love the fact that you're going live again. Uh, man, we got to, we just got to get back and talk about how we sponsor some of those events with you. Cause that's how we can, we're going to ask you to let us sponsor a couple of your events. Is that all right? No, I'm not looking for, <laughs> I'm not looking for a sponsor. I'm looking for a partner. Okay. Right. Let's, let's, let's go change some lives. Right. I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in if you're looking for a partner. Hey, I, right? I remember partnering with you on the August event and it was like, what are we all going to do? And we're going to say, Hey, we're going to do what we can do. And that's what we're, and, and we went live and we had the thousands of people on there. So right. it was, it was awesome. So look forward to getting flesh to flesh again, man. Right, Mr. Jones is in the changing, house. changing lives and our, Big and, guy. uh, our co-founder uh, and co-CEO, Mark Jones. Mark. Michael, good to see you, man. You too. Did you end up making it to Italy and Greece? Look at that. He remembered. <laughs> I, you, you know what? I, I, I've, been, I've been there before. I haven't gone again. So, no. You didn't go in July, right? You were going to go in July, right? July you, or August? Couldn't. They wouldn't let you. Yeah. I, I had the books on order. I had a couple of books for you. Yeah. But I, I didn't well, I, send them because I didn't want you to miss it really bad. Well, we we actually were taking my my in laws and we were, we wanted to. There were a couple of ports we wanted to hit that we'd been to the south of France because that was really what it was about. Anyway, uh, I I wanted to add my uh, my thanks to you uh, for for all you're doing for us, and I wanted to tell you um, how proud you must be of your son and and the, the World Series of baseball that's been so fun to watch on on Facebook. You know what? My, I had a daughter that 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 did the same thing when she was like in she was 12 or 13. I remember I can't remember what they call that age, but there's a name for her. went to the state championships and all the parades and all that. So I'm kind of living vicariously through you watching you do it with your son again. It's it's really cool to watch. Thanks for putting that stuff out there. Well, thank you for doing it. I, I actually got some feedback like, I don't know, 18 months ago where a couple naysayers were out there where, you know, why are you always bragging on Max and why are you always then it's like. So I quit posting for a while. And then I had so many people that were like, Hey, where's the baseball updates? You know? So it's like, uh, so I'm glad I'm back to it too. Put and, me in that camp. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. How about that well, ball he hit over the scoreboard to tie the game against the number four team in the country? What, what I mean, a proud Papa moment is that, I mean, that's uh, like you, you pray for moments like that. You yeah. got one. Yeah. yeah. Amen. True story. Well, Michael, Michael, please share with me for the non-Facebook and the other non-Facebook people out there. Please tell me who, what teams and where are we at right now? Well, if you're talking like Max, is that what you're talking about or otherwise? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so here, here, you guys want the, here's the true scoop, right? Is, you know, he broke both his arms. Yeah, literally he, he broke both his arms about uh, three weeks ago. And on Thursday, we're going in to see if he can get his cast taken off. And then hopefully three weeks later, he can get out and play ball. So that's where he's at right now. But, um, you know, inside scoop on this is, is he was selected uh, for Team USA to get – now he hasn't quite made it, but he's been invited to the, to the eval, to the evaluations in July. And, uh, you know, he'll be three weeks healed um, before the, the, the Team USA stuff. But, you know, he – he just turned 12 and you know he's already getting noticed at a at a national level you know he's not perfect let me tell you he'll strike out he'll he'll mess up he still he still does his stuff but man he he's he's a joy to watch he really is good stuff all right thank you for sharing and good luck with the healing process for sure to max yeah that's right uh, thank thanks you. again michael for joining us i know you're busy as uh yeah, you said buddy. And uh, we'll let you get on with your day. We'll see everybody back here tomorrow for the readiness briefing, 11 o'clock. Don't forget to mark your calendars. Jason, you there? Sorry, I had to, the video keeps playing, but, you know, <laughs> so I had to stop that. But, um, okay, so I'll, I'll transfer over back to you. Hang on one second. Okay, thank you. Um, you have some parting words for us, Jason, Michelle? 
Um, I'll let Michelle touch on something that, that we spoke about yesterday that I think would, would be huge right now for the market. Um, I, in terms of this stuff, I mean, you know, it, all of it's great, even last week too, um, but you actually have to do it. So that, that goes for not only, you know, everybody watching this, but myself too, um, you know, to put this stuff into action is one thing uh, and, and the most important thing. So um, hopefully it's provided some value to you and, and we can continue to do that over the next couple of weeks. And, and that's really our goal. Uh, and if there's anything that we can do for you from a, from a lending side, obviously, uh, we'd love the opportunity and show you how we're different and want to provide value and treat your clients uh, the same way that you want them to be treated and, and that you treat them. And uh, just, you know, basically just show you how we are different than, than the other lenders out there. Hey, Jason, Absolutely. before... Before Michelle starts, uh, would you mind writing while Michelle's talking your your email and Michelle's email um, so people can reach out to you? Uh, write that in the chat so people can reach out to you for slides from this. Um, I'm particularly interested in the slides from this too. So if you don't mind shooting me a copy as well, that'd be great. Okay. Right. Um, I thought this was fantastic. But go ahead, Michelle. Okay. And mine's short and sweet. Um, Amero Uno is starting a program for FHA loans. It's Amero Uno Advantage. And what we're doing is we will pay for the seller's tax stance on the deed and also up to $1,000 of appraisal repairs if needed. So that's another incentive for your clients that I think is amazing, honestly. So yeah, short and sweet. And if you guys need flyers on that, I send everything over to Ryan. So he has all that information in, in Spanish and in English. So I, I will shoot it out to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, anybody that needs, uh, I think Jason just did it, but anybody that needs, um, let me scroll up there. There's Jason's, um, Jason, we put Michelle's in there too, or Michelle put yours in there. Sure. Um, and uh, anybody that needs slides from today, this is, this is a, a fantastic training, I thought. And I think the, the pyramid of, of marketing is something I hadn't seen in years. Um, but it's, it's just genius, the personal touch and the, and the informational touches and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. Guys, you got to follow that and you got to hit on all of those that you can. So um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. I look forward to uh, next week and um, I'll distribute this information and uh, we'll be going. But Sounds thank good. you so much. I, I thought this was fantastic, Jason. And uh, we'll talk about next week. And if you guys want to give me some input on what you want to see, um, you agents want to let me know, um, Jason, I know you have stuff on video marketing, you have stuff on all kinds of stuff. Um, so anything that you guys are interested in, let me know and we'll get it on the docket for you. But, uh, I thought this referral, this whole referral type thing was, was fantastic. Really was. Well, thank you for having us again. Yeah, Thank you so much. You we'll see you next week. Thanks guys. Bye. Okay. Um, those of you who know me know what my favorite part of that whole thing was. Um, it has to do with carrying around for sale sign or sold signs. I thought that was fantastic. Um, I love stuff like that, stuff that makes you stand out, stuff that makes people notice you and know what you do for a living. And, and uh, I, I just love that, that, kind of, uh, that kind of marketing. You're going to be going somewhere anyway, carry it for sales or a sold sign. Um, even carry a for sale sign, carry anything around that, that, that makes you that makes you stand out and people know what you do and they're going to just come up to you and ask you questions. So, um, do you guys have any questions or comments on that before I get into some of the questions that were emailed to me? Anybody questions, comments, something you got out of it today? I've actually taken his course before, and mm -hmm. um, I started doing I do housewarming <clears throat> housewarming parties for all most of my. Um, my buyers usually, I'll just tell them that's my closing gift. And I'd love to do, I usually tell them at the beginning that I'd like to do a housewarming party for them to start getting together your guest list. And then I usually have it catered with um, either Tijuana or Sunny's and I pay for everything. I do all the invitations. Um, and then you get, you, you, you can do raffles and stuff too, to have the guests fill out their information so that you can market to their guests. But so I, I started doing that once I several years ago when I went to hear him speak. I think that's I think that's absolutely wonderful. You that's how you meet all their friends. If you want to meet all their friends and family, that's how you do it. Um, right. People that are closest to them, that's how you do it. Um, 
Thank you, Tammy, for that. I, I thought that was great. I thought the calling after uh, hailstorms to see if you've been affected by this or, I mean, guys, anything that happens, any kind of event calling that you can do, um, do it. There's a reason to reach out. You're always looking for a reason to reach out to people. Okay. So uh, be sure you're doing that. Anything else that you guys uh, got out of that that you like? Relationships. Yes. Relationships. Absolutely. That's what all the business is about. Hey guys, they know a million realtors who has a relationship with them. All right, I'm gonna get into some of these questions and if you guys come up with something else then you can in the meantime. Um, all right, an agent asks, when representing a seller in a listing, if the seller receives multiple offers for this property and one or more have escalation clauses, is the seller obligated to accept the offers with escalation clause because they are technically the higher offer? Okay, back to contract 101. What is the most important term in a contract? Who knows the most important term in a contract? Anybody know? Good, it's a trick question. There is no most important term. It's whatever the seller deems most important. So sometimes that'll be, sometimes that'll be the price. Sometimes it'll be the closing date. Sometimes it'll be absolutely anything, guys. Inspection, sometimes it'll be whatever, right? So um, there, there is no, absolutely no obligation to accept the, uh, accept the escalation clause, okay? So you guys have seen it all the time. You guys are taking cash deals that are less than finance deals, um, et cetera. Am I freezing? Because some of you guys are freezing. Am, am I? No, you can hear me fine? Okay. Um, if there are multiple offers with escalation clauses, how is that handled? Can the ch seller choose not to choose those? Absolutely. So escalation clause, guys, it just, it just makes sure that you're going to beat them on price up to a certain point. Does not guarantee that you're going to be accepted. Um, you guys know that, especially with appraisals right now. If you guys, if you have a $400,000 house and I offer you a million dollars, but it has appraisal contingency, it's no better than the offer for 415, is it? Right? So what difference does it make? Um, so no, escalation clauses, people are accepting offers for less money all the time right now because everybody wants the no or short inspection and the no or, or waived appraisal, right? Okay. Um, does everybody understand that? The person that asked, do you understand that? Okay. Um, when language is appropriate to add, what language is appropriate to use when a buyer wants to submit an offer and waive the appraisal contingency? Um, I sent that out and I don't know if we put a copy. Abby, did we put a copy on Paperless Pipeline of that language? I don't know that we did. I don't think we did. Okay. I put it on our Facebook uh, group page one day. I'll send it to you. Um, but, you know, what's appropriate also depends exactly on what the buyer wants to do. Um, so if you're going to waive the appraisal contingency, the important part is to make sure that you do not go above the contracted purchase price. So make reference to the contracted purchase price. Um, and, and the language says something to the effect of uh, the buyer uh, agrees to bring uh, excess funds to closing above the appraised price up to the um, purchase price, up to the contracted purchase price. Okay. All right, scenario, home listed for 260, comparable show, same home, home sold for 240, 245. So it's short 15 to 20K probably. Buyer only has an extra 15,000 to make up the shortest on the appraisal, but what if the home didn't appraise for 240 and instead appraised for 230? Okay, the, 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 the appropriate language to use, okay, now I have an example. The appropriate language to use is to say the buyer will go 15,000 above, up to 15,000 above appraisal price not to exceed the contracted purchase price, okay? Because what if the appraisal comes in at 255, then they're not gonna pay 15 above, which we have seen people write that before. Buyer will pay 15,000 above appraisal price. Well, that's, what if it appraises at full price? It's crazy. So we have seen that before. Um, okay, if the buyer's offer is rejected, but they'd like to keep it as a backup offer, does that mean they cannot put in another offer on another property because they're being kept with backups? No, you can, this is a case where you can put in another offer on another property uh, without being unethical, okay? So can a seller contract their property to sell to more than one buyer at one time without calling one a backup? No, they cannot sign two contracts. They cannot even, they cannot even counter two contracts at the same time because what if they both take it, take the counter, right? So you counter one at a time, if you accept, 
one one needs to be told up front that they're a backup like sounds like like this was um but yes your buyer can buy another property and back out of their backup contract with no ethical issues whatsoever your timelines don't even start on their backup contract until the original contract cancels okay Does everybody understand that okay awesome any further questions on any of that stuff Anyone? Okay. Um, any other questions on anything? So we are, um, guys, how many of you guys are getting the, um, oh gosh, what's the new Prime Street leads? How many of you guys are getting the new Prime Street leads? I know some of you are. Um, Tammy, I know you are. The um, We've had some very good success. The ones who come through are good. Uh, those leads are really, really good. If you guys aren't getting them, you need to be signed up for them and start getting them. They are leads from, uh, they differ from the Op City leads and that they're leads from homes.com. There's nothing under $100,000. There's no land, there's no rentals. Um, there's not as many of these leads, but they are good when you get them. Okay. So be sure you're signed up for Prime Street if you're eligible. Um, to be eligible, you have to have five, five, at least five deals in the last year, and at least one of them has to be with us. So, um, if that's the case, be sure that you're signed up for them. Now they have just started taking on um, people who do not qualify for that program. And I assume this is where their uh, other leads are going. They're under, under 100,000 and their rentals and their other stuff. If you guys are interested in that as well, please let me know. Um, Chris, um, Romina, the name is Prime Street. Prime Street. Um, Chris, you have a question. Yes. Um, so I have a, I'm the owner of a, a condo and also acting as a realtor. And uh, so I received the purchase order for it, signed it, accepted it, sent it off to the HOA to have them approve it because they have to approve all owners and, and renters. And they rejected it because there was a child that would be living there. The problem is, is not a 55 and up community and they don't restrict based upon age. I mean, other than 18 and younger. And <clears throat> I guarantee you they don't meet the, you know, 80% of people living there as considered old. It's not senior housing. It's none of that. So I, my wife is a real estate litigation attorney. I asked her about it. She thought it was clear um, from real discrimination. She suggested sending them a letter. And then if not to maybe file a complaint with HUD, but I don't know if any of you, or if you know a different route, because part of the problem is I also don't want to uh, discriminate against anybody. I don't want to get in trouble for discriminating, you know, any of that situation too. Plus this, I, you know, I really like for this woman to get it. And I think she's being treated unfairly. So. Um, Chris, I'd like to say something right off the bat. I would tell you to do exactly what you, what you're doing is to see an attorney. And it sounds like you have a great free one. So that would be great. <laughs> um, and, and who specializes in real estate litigation. I don't think you could do any better than that. So you married very well. So I would have uh, her fire off that letter immediately. Um, that does okay. sound like, I mean, if it's as clear cut as you're making it sound, it sounds exactly like what it is. Okay. Have you or anybody else filed it or used, done a complaint with HUD before or anything? Uh, I have not. Anybody okay. else? No. No, okay. uh, it doesn't look like it. Um, They're horrible. Yeah, I, I spent like almost seven mm -hmm. months to get $1,000 back for a buyer 10 years ago. And I swore to myself, I'll never let another buyer put themselves in that spot again. It's horrible. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would say, I would say that you're taking the exact right path, and I don't think it'll come to a HUD complaint. They should back off when an attorney sends them a letter. That sounds, that sounds highly, it sounds really cut and dry. But I don't, I'm not an attorney, but it sounds really cut and dry. That is, that is, you cannot, uh, uh, you cannot uh, discriminate based on familial uh, family situation. I know that. So, Chris, I'm sorry not to give you much information other than what you already had, but it sounds, I'll just give you a thumbs up because that's exactly what I would tell you to do is talk to an attorney about it. But it sounds like pretty cut and dry. All right, we'll do. Anybody else have any questions, comments? I um, do. Yes, Malvis. If anybody knows of pool inspectors, can you put some information on the chat for me to copy, please? Pool inspectors? 
pool, yeah, pooling. Like for leaks and stuff? For leaks and stuff or, yes, okay. or any type of pool inspection or for building pools or things like that. Um, that's one. And two, um, what, what, is, what, what are you guys doing uh, with listing agents not answering their phone calls, text messages, responding to your offers, emailing you back? I, this is awful right now, Ryan. I'm so frustrated. I, I'm working with a buyer and I, my offers can't get accepted. <laughs> and they're pretty good, strong buyers. They're, they're unconventional. They're putting 25% down. They're, they're pretty darn good. And I, they're, I'm, they're not just, they're not getting accepted. Um, and um, they're offering way above asking price. And well, not way, but yes, above asking prices. And um, some of the listing agents are, are just not answering back, returning phone calls, uh, voicemails, or even text messages. Well, I know we've seen our agents talking about on our, our group page, they're getting 30 and 40 offers for properties and, and they're creating spreadsheets and doing all that kind of stuff. It is a, um, uh, yeah, people, that's just human nature that they don't need you. They might not call you back. So um, it is frustrating. I, I, I understand that. Um, what kind of financing are your, do your people have? So if anybody has a townhome, condo, apartment, whatever, available in 32829, 32832, they are conventional. They're putting 25% down. Um, they're pretty strong buyer. <laughs> They have been pre-approved for three, three oh five. Okay. Two bedrooms, two bath works. Three bedrooms, two bath works. Anybody, help, please. <laughs> okay. I have a suggestion, Ryan. Yes, ma'am. Um, how do you say any Malvis? Malvis. Malvis. Yes. Malvis. Hi, Malvis. Um, have you? checked on like I use realist whenever I have a situation like this I use realist on the MLS you know one of the free MLS apps and do a search for exactly what they're looking for you could put in both zip codes you could put in the bedrooms bathrooms you could put in um years of ownership um so you're not you know looking for people that are brand new owners and then do a search and find all those people that they you know all those houses that are looking ideally like they want and then reach out to them you can send a letter would be the easiest way um, I've done it before where I've sent a letter, you know, talking about my clients, describing them, and I've included their pre-approval letter in there. Um, so the highest pre-approval you can get, put that in there with them, um, block out any of their personal information, of course, um, but include that so they see that you're serious and you're not just, you know, somebody looking for listings, um, that you really do have a genuine buyer and reaching out to them through email. Um, you know, I use a dialing system too that gets phone numbers, so you could always do that also. Um, but you really just have to go above and beyond right now. And of course, you can get both sides of the transaction. That would be even better. Um, I've done this before and only a few times have I really been able to actually get a seller for that buyer. But I, I mean, I have one right now that's under contract. It was a year later and they're ready to sell. So they called me last year when I was looking for this buyer and they weren't ready to sell just yet, but now they are. So it's, you know, just good, good marketing for yourself in general to do that type of thing. So, and it's also great so that your buyers see that you're going above and beyond and that you're really working hard for them because it's super frustrating for buyers right now. Yeah. Um, so that can be uh, your you, part Ryan. that you can do. If you need any help with that, you can uh, message me on Facebook okay. or uh, text okay. me. Okay, thank you so much. I, have, I really appreciate it. Sure. I've never that done before, but I'm gonna do it for them because, and for anybody, and I'm gonna start doing that because I can't get them into anything. And they're, I'm sitting behind the computer submitting offers at midnight, you know, giving them 24 hours to respond back, you know, submitting really good and strong offers and they're just not getting it. And I'm afraid that, you know, that they're going to get tired. Makes sense. Any other questions or comments? Is there a way to publicly announce an open house without calling it an open house? Is there any way to publicly announce an open house and MLS public remarks without calling it an open house in which that verbiage is not allowed? Am I there? There we are. Hey, hey Mike. 
Yeah. Hi. Hi, Ryan. Hey, everybody. Uh, question is, I've, I've got a Fizbo where uh, the that I took on with a uh, seller and quite adamant about getting uh, an announcement out through uh, the means of MLS uh, with an open house. And I recently found out that open house, the term itself, the verbiage is not allowed in public remarks. Has anybody uh, been successful in announcing an open house in the public remarks MLS without being uh, tagged as uh, 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 not, not, not able to do? It's, it's an infraction. Well, you can you can use their actual open house button. Yes, that that we've done. Yeah, he, he okay. we, I was trying to figure out if there was because when it gets sent out to uh, the other IDX sites, uh, it, other as I think Zillow will announce it as an open house that way. He and he was just looking for another way to do that, and I thought, well, I don't know, uh, they won't allow that particular verbiage. But let me check around with everybody here. I mean, you can try it. Or you can try saying the the home will be available for viewing on. Saturday between two and four, but I don't know if that's allowed or not. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll try it, see what happens. Anybody else? I don't believe you can announce any kind of open house on the on the remarks whatsoever. Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to. That's why you're, they, they want you to use the open house, but. Right, I, yep, okay. All right, thank you. Why do you want to, Mike? What is this for? Uh, the, the, it's uh, why do I want to announce the open remark or the open house in the remarks? Yeah, instead of just putting it on where it's supposed to go on the MLS and I then just, having everyone see it there. Something the seller is like I say, this is a I took on a FISBO. <laughs> this guy's really, really adamant about how he wants he he does he's done a lot. Uh, I just pretty much facilitate what he wants uh, to mm -hmm. get done, and that's it. So it was just yeah. a question I want to throw out there and see if I could yeah. satisfy his. Uh, I, your I would sh I would show him that if you go on Zillow or Realtor.com and he looks at your listing, it's the first thing that they put on there is open house this date and time. You're so right. having it on the public remarks isn't going to do you much better than what Zillow and Realtor.com do. Right. But it's already super visible. Right, right. He's aware of that. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Yeah, most of these FISBO folks are are pretty convinced that they're better at your job than you are, and and they follow Zillow and 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 oh, yeah. dot com and, and <laughs> excessively. Yeah, I've I've had that before. I've had that with family before. It's pretty rough. Um, it's like, hey, you know, I'm doing this for free, right? Um, okay, it's so uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Um, all right, guys, any other questions or comments? I do. Sorry. Yes, Malvis. Hey, Malvis. Sorry. Call me the question queen, but I, I do have questions and I, I need to ask them. Sure. Uh, so for sell by owners, right? I Right now I have a potential um, deal that I don't know if it's going to go through because I've, I haven't spoken to the seller, to the owner yet, but um, somebody contacted me. They want to purchase the home that they're currently in. Of course, I already look at comparables. I I can help them both side, blah, 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 all that stuff. But my question is, I don't know if I'll get the deal. I already have them, put them in contact to someone to get pre-qualified. My question is, if the seller who I haven't spoken to yet, I told them to give the seller my number, that way they, they can at least talk to me and I can see if they agree to pay me something, the buyer would agree to pay me a, a fee. They're friends, so I'm going to, I'm just going to charge them a, a fee. Um, if, if they agree, but I'm also trying to get the seller to pay me something. Can I put a contract together for both of them with the realtor's bar contract, even if the house is not on, on the market? And then if when the deal goes through, I just put that information in the MLS as the data entry kind of thing? Within 30 days of closing. With, okay. And then also... If the if both parties agree to pay me, do I have do I have a buyer broker agreement with a buyer, or what 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 is it that needs to be filled out with both parties if they both agree to pay me something? If the seller if the seller will pay you, just have the seller pay you. Um, it doesn't have to be written down or. Or no no it needs to be written down for sure. Um, since it is not a, a marketed property, you can write your commission in the in the contract. Um, since it is not, there's not an offer of compensation already. 
You can write oh, your commission okay. in the contract. Does the seller know that the buyer wants to buy the house? Yes, the seller is actually giving giving the buyer the opportunity to buy the house. So okay. that is the one that is my, if, you know, an acquaintance okay. of mine. Okay, so the seller's already said to the buyer, you can buy this house for X amount of dollars. Yes, yes. Okay, well, the seller's not going to pay you a commission if you go in there with the exact amount of money and say, now I'm the realtor. They're not going to pay you anything. I know I certainly wouldn't if I were the seller and I've already negotiated a deal with them. So if you're, you're probably not going to get paid by the seller unless you say he's agreed to take $250,000 for this house and you're offering him two fifty two dollars with, you know, 1%. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he may do that, but he's not going to take two fifty that he's already agreed to with the buyer and pay you a commission. Um, Cause I mean, what does he need you for? So, right. Well, I was just offering to, for him to even talk to me and I was going to, I wasn't going to charge him any percentage per se. It was just going to be a flat fee to oversee the transaction from beginning to end, get them in touch with title company, things like absolutely. that. Absolutely. If they'll pay you a thousand bucks each or 500 each, or, you know, whatever, 1500 each or two grand each or whatever they'll pay you. I don't know what the house is worth. If they'll, whatever they'll pay you. Great. It's worth way more of what he wants to sell it for that. I, I already looked. Well, fantastic. Well, you should buy it, Malvis. Kick out the huh. tenants. Uh, all right. So, yeah, that's that's what you yeah nego- yeah just negotiate something with them and and your 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 buyers. If you've shown your your friends the buyers that they should be happy to pay you uh, a, a decent amount. If you've shown them that the house is worth fifty thousand more than what they're paying for, they ought to be really happy to pay you something to handle everything for. Them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So yeah, you work Thank out you. both sides, but it, I, I doubt the seller is going to pay you anything if they're coming in right at what he asked. And they should, um, and they should pay you on the side. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? I I think that brings to the forefront the conversation I had with Ava and a couple of our other agents yesterday, as you know, Ryan, about negotiating on your own behalf while you're concerned about these other parties, which is awesome. And I agree, you should put yourself in that loop up front so that you are going to be fairly compensated by any party. Yeah, she's gonna get a buyer brokerage agreement, she says. So that's good. Perfect. I have a question. So my daughter has the opportunity to buy well, she's to buy the condo that she's living in. And I'm kind of facilitating the deal at no commission at all. Um, do I need, do, what do I need to do? I mean, I, if I write up the contract, do, I, do we need anything? Um, do I need to do anything with the seller or what do I do? Uh, you need to, okay, so there's this property's off market and you're just Correct. F- facilitating yeah, she, a sale between two people. Yes, yes. Um, you need to uh, disclose that you're involved in it and that it's for a family member and that the seller is not represented. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, do I, is there, is that the... Is there a document that we use for that? Or I just write that up as a- There's a notice of non-representation. Okay, okay. Um, And you're gonna put it in the MLS afterward for for data purposes? Probably, yes. Okay, good. Well, we need need anything that you're involved in. We need all your paperwork. um, Okay. So you run it like a regular deal. Right, I knew that part, but I just didn't know how to handle, if I was a transaction broker or how that worked. Um, it, it's, it's going to be hard to sell yourself as a transaction broker for your daughter's property. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. What was the notice of, what was that document? Non-representation. Of, okay. Great. Thanks. All right. Enjoy your, uh, Manny Petty there. Um, any, uh, any other questions or comments? All right, guys. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope you guys got, did you guys like that video? Give me a uh, nod your head. If those of you have your cameras on, give me a thumbs up or something. Awesome. One more thing. What's that, Daryl? Somebody mentioned Facebook earlier. Hey, if you're not, if you're not in the group Orlando Real Estate Mastermind, please join. 
Ryan just gave a great thing on a 100% um, brokerage. So he, he read a whole paragraph. It was great. So if yeah. anybody's not mind, Orlando Real Estate Mastermind, do that. It's good, great. Yeah, scroll down to the part about 100% brokerages and tell them how much you love FRI, unless you don't. And if you don't, lie about how much you love FRI. <laughs> so, um, okay. all right, guys. Well, uh, thank you all. Um, do you guys like today's video? Yes. Did, did everybody liked it? Good. What do you guys want to see in the future? Do you guys want to see the video on videos? How to create videos. Are you guys interested in that? What are you guys interested in? Um, social media uh, stuff. Like teach, teach me how, to, I'm did, also, like how to do things. Did you go back and look at last week's? I, for the... The guy last week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll have more of that. I'll I, request more of that. That's always helpful to you guys, like especially us older Instagram. folks. Instagram. Yeah, okay. I'll see how specified they get on that, but probably. <laughs> um, but you know, you guys have Abby too. Abby's the queen of Instagram, Snapchat. Yes. Um, Tinder, all that stuff. She's great at it. Um, <laughs> um, so I'm not even sure what they all are, so I'm going to stop. Um, but she could help you. Um, if you guys need individual help like that, please. Okay. Um and but I, I agree. I, I know that I love the social media ones because I I learn something every time because some of us are old and and it gets uh, a little more difficult for us to catch on to everything. But yes, videos, Chris, I got you. We will. I, I definitely want to do that. Uh, Jika, listing meetings, gotcha, gotcha. I'm writing these down, guys. Believe it or not. Um, videos, listing meetings. Anything else? Um, more social media. Anybody else? Oh, it's TikTok, not Tinder. Thank you, Mandy. I get confused. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, TikTok, guys. Um, you've heard of it. Use it. Um, anybody else? Anything else? Just let me know. You guys can email me throughout the week or whatever you want. I appreciate it. Um, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Um, we'll have a whole new series for you guys. I will send you that stuff from uh, the AmeriUno Advantage. Um, for those of you who, uh, it, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool way to get people to uh, be able to buy their, they're doing, I know she didn't get into it, but they're doing um, up to a thousand dollars of repairs for if you do it. If, so it's for FHA deals that I know you guys can't get approved and they're trying to help you get them approved up to a thousand dollars in repairs. The first thousand dollars they'll pay and not at closing. They'll come out of pocket before closing and help the seller pay that. So you're offering to help the seller pay with any of these little repairs that FHA wants. And then they're paying doc stamps for the seller, which as you guys know, are $700 for every $100,000 that they that they get. So that's pretty strong. So if you sell a $300,000 house, that saves the seller 2,100 bucks. So, and, and on up from there. So uh, that's very helpful. Um, Guys, lenders are dying to do the, well, the FHA, FHA is dying to do these uh, FHA loans and they are helping out when they can. I think that's a pretty cool thing to do. It'll help you get your FHA deals that you can't get approved, help you get them approved because that adds a little bit something to it. Because the number one thing people are worried about with FHA deals, you guys know when you're listing a home and you see an FHA, uh, I already know the screen door is broken. I already know there's a problem with the water here. I already know there's, you know what I mean? And the seller doesn't want to deal with all that. Give me a conventional, get me out the door, They'll come back and say, hey, the hot water heater is broken. And in this market, I'll tell them tough luck and see you at the closing table. And that's working for now. But if you got an FHA buyer, it's tough. So um, look at what they're doing at AmeriFirst and AmeriUna. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty cool thing. It's called uh, Advantage. Um, and I will send it out to you guys. I'll send out the flyer that she sent me. All right. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you.